We are here for a brand new season on F1 Manager 23. We have just signed for Williams Racing. We just won the Constructors' Championship, the Drivers' Championship with McLaren, Lando Norris and Sebastian Vettel. Lando Norris is the reigning Drivers' World Champion going into this one, but we have left McLaren. Our work there was done. We returned them to glory and now we've moved to Williams to do the same thing because Williams was once a great 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 team one of the giants in formula one in terms of winning and just competitiveness and they haven't been there for a long long while so we are going to take them back to the top and we're going to do it with yuki Tsunoda, a driver that won a race in this williams car last season as one of our competitors and alongside him well we've got to decide that because they did have giovanazzi but we've gotten rid of him we don't need him i don't want him he wasn't in the plans and we're going to try and sign someone at the start of this episode and then get into round one for the Australian Grand Prix. Yeah, I just couldn't wait. I was itching to start this season of, of this career on this game, you know, because I told you guys in the last episode where we were actually showing you the mechanics of how we, we've we moved teams from McLaren to Williams, uh, I told you guys I was actually going to start this series in January and actually start off my maybe doing some streams with it, but I am actually so eager to just get underway that we've started early. We've started in December and we're going to go ahead with a few episodes of the Williams manager career here. In January, I still will be trying out some streams of certain episodes um, but I just wanted to get underway I was kind of just eager to actually play the game and see what's what with a new team it's the first time we've actually had this where we've moved a team in the F1 manager game so I kind of just want to see how it feels like to be in a new team you know different performance levels kind of having to relearn maybe how to be okay with just getting a couple of points maybe depending on how this Williams car is going to perform but um, yeah streams will have to wait till January even though the series has begun now here in December uh, the reason why I can't stream that much in this month is just because I'm freaking busy. I, I, I'm left, right, and center, quadrant shoots, my own stuff, trying to juggle the holidays as well with friends and family. You know how it is, basically. But in January, I won't have a lot of that. I'll be able just to, you know, take some time out of my day and just stream some of the episodes. But right now, it's just going to be the classic video episodes because it means I can record these at some weird times and kind of, you know, pre-record some content and then upload it later down the line in the month. First of all, let's sort out this driver issue. So let's have a look. A few of you were saying that Lewis Hamilton may be available as a free agent because there's no, well, I don't know if there's an actual retirement mechanic, but Alonso's a free agent, Hamilton's a free agent, Piastri's a free agent because he he didn't get signed by anyone. And by the way, if you want to know the driver transfers, check out the last video that we did where I signed for Williams for the first time because I went through all the different teams and you can you can know why. Piastri, who was in Red Bull alongside Verstappen, is now a free agent. So he might be a good pick, but Lewis Hamilton, I mean, if he's available, I mean, he's open to negotiate. He's got patience very high. I think it'd be rude not to try and sign the 39-year-old. I don't know whether we'll be able to sign him, whether, you know, there's no, like, it doesn't say retired, but they just won't accept an offer. I mean, it says open to negotiation, so I haven't scouted him. I don't know how much money he's going to want, but... It's worth a try. It's worth a try. We've got a vacant role in that car. Obviously, he's not in Mercedes anymore, so I'm going to go just for one season because I don't think he's going to want to sign for more than that. Obviously, starting immediately. And then salary, I have no idea. Um, I think Lando at McLaren, when we, when we had him, he was on about, I think, 16 million, 20 million up to that. And I know other drivers are at, like, you know, 25 million, so... Let's see. Hamilton. Let's go in with 25 million. I just said that figure. I'm pretty sure, like, you know, I, I think, like, you know, Leclerc and stuff like that, they're on 25 million. So let's try 25 million. Um, and with a bit of a signing bonus as well. Maybe just to grease the wheels. I mean, this is a lot of money, though. Um, this is going to be two. What's that? When we get to even 25 million? Two, two million a race. We are paying him. Sign you know what? No signing. No signing bonus. But I will give him a bonus if he gets third place in the Williams car. Let's go for like a I don't know, quarter of a mil. Let's go for a nice even number like that. 250k. Right, let's see. Lewis. You've uh you left Mercedes. You've had a pretty torrid time in the last two seasons on this game and in this series of ours. So I feel like 
the Williams car is actually a pretty... Well, I'm hoping it's going to be decent. It was decent last season. Obviously, we'll get to that in a sec with some car analysis. But let's see. Offer contract. What is he going to say? And he's declined. He's declined. So, uh, contract length is too long. Oh. Oh. Does that mean he... He's too long considering retiring soon. Does that mean he just won't ever accept anything? Like, 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 like that's how they're putting him into retirement? Like, he just won't accept? Because the lowest I can do is only one season. I can't do a couple of months uh, part-time gig. And salary is still too low. 25 mils too low for Lewis Hamilton. Um, you know, considering how he's been performing last two seasons, mate. I don't know if you should, if you could be asking for a lot more. Let's go for 30 million, but I can't do anything. I can't do anything about the season thing. Like, I can't go lower. So, is just, is that him off the table? Yeah, I go lower. It goes up to five seasons. Um, let me lower. Well, I mean, no, he was fine with the bonus. He was fine with that. Right, send proposal. I feel like this is too expensive for us anyway. And he's, ah, oh, he's rejected it. She's sorry. Hang on a minute. I've only just realized he, the only thing he's actually rejected is the one season. He's actually accepted a 30 million salary. He's fine with that. He's happy with that. But he's not going to accept a contract because he, he just wants to have a holiday. Well, that's that then. We can't sign Hamilton, even though he, it says open negotiation. But I guess that's just the game's way of making them retired, I guess. Um, at least that's that's what I'm understanding from that. If I see Hamilton or, or Alonso be signed by someone later in the season, I'll be annoyed. But um, I think Hamilton and Alonso, they're off the table then, clearly, because they're in retirement. So the next best driver, quite literally, is Oscar Piastri. Very much all this deliberation, all this movement of drivers in McLaren, moving teams for ourselves. And where did that bring us? Back to Oscar Piastri, who was our first driver alongside Lando Norris in the first season. It's kind of poetic, in a way, that I'm continuing a return to glory series with Williams now. And I'm going to, well, I'm hoping I can have Oscar Piastri back under my management. And we maybe didn't do him as much justice as we could have done in the first season. He was starting to come good at the end of the first season with McLaren. But then, of course, we went a different way. We, you know, he left us for Red Bull and we had to go for Vettel. So there's a little bit of frostiness there. You know, he was the one, he was the one who left us, remember? You know, we didn't choose to, to, to boot him. He left us and we had to, you know, make that desperate signing of bringing Vettel out of retirement. So I won't forget that. But also at the same time, there's unfinished business, I feel, with the Australian who I, I very much am a fan of. So let's try and sign him. Now, Oscar Piastri, he shouldn't be asking for too much. Um, I think Seb, we signed for like 12.5 million a year, I think, beforehand. So let's try that. Let's see. He's got a very high patience, so we can afford to go through maybe three rounds of, like, you know, bumping up the salary. But 12.5 million for an 88-rated driver, I feel like that's fair. I feel like that is fair. Let's check. Response. No. No. Whoa. He wants one uh, more than one season. Okay, sorry. That's my bad. But he's also not happy with the salary as well. So that's a problem. I feel like this may be a long-term si signing. Two seasons. Two seasons. That's, that's long-term for me in this career mode series. Let's bump this up to um, 16, 16 million. I think that's what we put Seb on when we left McLaren. That's like the lowest offer he accepted. So let's put him on 16 million. I feel like this should he should accept this. 16 million for 88 rated driver. I think that's more than enough. Two seasons as well. Um, I could put a race bonus as well. I'll put a race bonus of third place 10k. Yeah, should we go for that? Yeah, we'll, we'll go for that. We'll go for that. Right. Sending proposal. What's it got? And it has been accepted. We are going to sign Oscar Piastri alongside Yuki Tsunoda. Race winner, Yuki Tsunoda. I think that's a pretty awesome lineup. Marketing-wise, if this was real life, you'd be having a field day. Piastri and Tsunoda together. That's a pretty damn great pairing. That's that I love the energy in this team right from the get-go is wonderful. Now let's look at our car analysis to see what the damage is where we're going to be, um, you know, in around the grid. Let's look at the rank on the grid there. Um, and let's compare to, well, let's compare to our old team, McLaren. Obviously, we've had had a regulation change, and I actually didn't do much, if any, research 
with McLaren. So, kind of sneakily, I kind of have maybe already inflicted some pain on my old team because I didn't do any research with them, knowing I would be leaving at the end of the season. And the damn it! Oh! <laughs> oh no! Oh, the damage is bad! The damage is bad! It's very bad! Oh my god, I have actually, I, I'm actually such a cruel team principal. I'm devious. I am devious. I have left McLaren high and dry. I won them a championship, a constructors, and a drivers. And then I went, yep, yeah, I'm out. I'm going to head out. And I didn't do anything to keep them there. Better Ferrari? Okay, we're worse than Ferrari. Ferrari look good. Ferrari are pretty deep. We're still pretty damn great on high speed, though. But we're lacking in terms of engine cooling, total weight as well. You know what? I think we're placed quite okay, you know. Let's say, okay, we're better than Merck. We're better than, we're better than Alpine. We're, well, that's us, sorry. Uh, we're better than Haas. We're better than Alpha Tauri. Aston Mar okay. Aston Martin are better than us than most things. So it looks like, from what I can tell, the pecking order will be Red Bull... Ferrari, maybe, Aston close third. Then it looks like we could be the fourth best team on the grid off the bat, off this uh, off this new season with with with, uh, with Williams. Because it looks like McLaren genuinely, that we left them a bit screwed. I mean, we left them with Sebastian Vettel, Lando Norris, very capable hands, you know. Um, and I'm sure, and, and remember, we signed McLaren all of Ferrari staff. So they've got staff capable of upgrading rapidly, whereas we may not. You know, our staff, a little bit lower rated than we were used to at McLaren. So, you know, the fact that we've started off strong, you know, maybe we're going to fall flat in the arms race that is going to be this season. But that's okay. That's pretty promising. That's pretty promising. So, Piastri and Sonoda both have, I think, what is going to be a pretty solid car to score some points off the bat in the first race, I hope. Which is not a surprise, to be fair. Uh, you know, if, if Williams just did some good work at keeping their car where it was last season, which it looks like they have. You know, they were already scoring decent, consistent points at the end of last season. So this is our first day. We followed your career at McLaren with great interest with you on board. We're hoping to have an unparalleled season ahead of us. Yep. I am very excited. So now, it's really time to start just delving into upgrades, I guess, um, with the car. Also, could, could, is there anything we could do with getting a new new staff in? Like, are there better people? Um, no one's free here. It's going to be very difficult. There are no... Uh, the only one open to negotiation is at Alpha Tower. He's only one higher, so that's not worth it. What about Head of Aero? Um, okay. Alfa Romeo, he's open. Oh, that's a big jump. Aston Martin's head of aero is open. As well as Alpine, who have now got Padromo. Padromo has gone to Alpine. And of course, remember, he used to work for us. Peter Padromo worked for McLaren. And we couldn't offer him. He wanted too much money. So we let him go. And we signed someone else. Um... So could we steal him back? Could we have a renaissance, a McLaren renaissance at Williams? Piastri, our old head of aero. You know, could that be a, a thing? Let's scout him. Let's do a bit of scouting. Let's uh, let's keep that in the banker. I think that could be quite cool. Race engineers, though. How are we looking? Um, we've got a free agent here, a, a Hugh Bird. He's 36. I don't know why he's a free agent. He looks pretty damn good. Who are the people we've got? Uh, we could definitely do better than this. I think we go for Hugh Bird. Let's do a bit of um, we'll do a bit of standard scouting for him, and let's see see what's what. Right. Anyway, in the meantime, car. Oh, by the way, in terms of the calendar upcoming, we've got another 16 race calendar. A little bit mixed up now. We're going to start at the Australian Grand Prix. We're going to go to Las Vegas, then go to Montreal, Imola, Barcelona. Austria, Silverstone, Hungary, Belgium, Zandvoort, Monza, Suzuka, Mexico, and, and then Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and then in Brazil. So a bit of a different calendar for this season, uh, but I'm quite excited. And I'm quite excited the fact that now uh, one of our drivers, their home race is coming up next. But in terms of car parts, I think we need to look at a rear wing because our top end speed was not as high as I'd hoped. Ninth place 
absolutely need to look at a new rear wing here. Right, I've made a new front wing as well. Front wing and rear wing. Both wings, they're, they're two very important parts of the car. So we'll leave that. I think that'll be the, our only development because we've only got 1.6 million now. We actually, we actually have very little cash going on here. And I'm already realizing, as I just said, this actually, in many ways, will be a... Well, it actually will be a tougher challenge than McLaren, really. Um, I mean, the AI have done a lot of heavy work to get Williams to where they are at this point in Season 3 in our career save. And now we've got to carry on that work. Oh, okay. Upgrade. Oh, these must be upgrades the AI did. So we've got a hospitality upgrade. Okay. Oh, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. The, this team has maybe already purchased some long-term upgrades that are still yet to come in as we go on through. That's pretty cool. So hospitality, new hospitality area. Oh, construct. Are you kidding me? Construction delay. Oh, it's our CFD simulator. Oh, Williams bought a CFD simulator upgrade. And now we're going to have to delay it or we can complete it. No, okay, we'll delay it. We'll, we'll delay. Yeah, I can't be, I can't be affording 300k. Just to get it done like a couple of days ahead of schedule. Oh, no, no, no. I'm a penny pincher now. Long are the, long are the days gone. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Long gone are the days. That's English. Uh, where I break the cost cap. I am not that, I'm not that same man. I will not break the cost cap. In fact, I will actually have more money left in the purse for Williams, you'll find changed man i am okay pedromo Ooh, he's got 11 months left of his contract so we could we could sign him for next season we could do some long-term planning here it would cost us to fire our current staff but there would be no buyout at least I'll put a pin in this we'll look at this later down the line right rear wing's been done we're gonna make two of these Maybe a spare as well, just in case. That'll be done in time, won't it? Yeah, we got 81. We got 81 days till the Grand Prix. Okay, now we've got a little bit of money. We got a bit of money. 6.7. Okay, so we're not totally poor. We were just waiting for the monthly income to come in, but we already spent a decent amount on stuff. Okay, so we're not entirely poor. So we can we can definitely do some things. What's our facility saying though? What 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 we actually got in the uh what we got in the tank? So design. Oh god, bloody hell. Right. Um no, hang on a minute. We need to... This can't run. How have Williams been running this? How how have you let this slip this low? Um, We can't afford an upgrade. We're going to have to go for a refurb. But I need a refurb. I need upgrades to actually hit. And now I've run out of money. I've run out of money again. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. Oh, temporary shutdown for race simulator. Oh, weather can... What is... Wh how has this team been run... I would never let this stand if I was the manager from the get-go. How is the condition this poor? The, the weather center, 40% effectiveness. It's basically going to be a guy sticking his hand out the thing going, yeah, it's raining. Bloody hell, we've got, I feel like James Vowles now, real life. I'm going to have to do some serious work here. I'm going to have to crack out the... The hard graph to turn this team around to where we need to be. Right, facility upgrade has come in finally. CFD simulator. That's strong. That's good. That's cool. We've got the refurb on the way as well. We need to refurb the other... Where was it? The factory, wasn't it, as well? Um, my God. Okay. We really do have a lot of work to do. We really do. Oh, special VIP experience coming up at the Australian Grand Prix. This will lead to larger sponsor target payouts for this race. Payouts increased by three two times two for unmet ones i'm gonna accept this i'm gonna accept this i'm gonna go for it we've got to make sure we've got to make sure we hit those sponsor targets oh my god oh my god with what we've done what like 50 days out of 115 that were left to the australian grand prix and in that time mclaren have leapfrogged us on everything how is that ah uh -huh. Oh, I was so lulled into a false sense of where how good a car was. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie me. Even Alpine. Okay, no, we're better than Alpine. Oh, Merck are a bit better than us at some things. Oh, dearie me. Oh, dearie me. We need so we need more. We need more. We need to we need to design something else. Um, side pods. I feel like side pods are a good way to go. A chassis. Chassis could help. 
I think side pods generally have given us some very good performance in the past. So, right, refurbishment at the design center has been completed. We've also now got enough money to fix this factory as well and refurb that. Can we refurb the weather center? Yes, please. God damn it. Bloody hell. Bo boardroom. How are these people been living this entire time? This entire time. You lot have been just living in misery. Right, refurb the weather center. Good. And the tour center. And the boardroom. Oh, bloody hell. Notice some tension be between Piastri and their race engineer. Um, oh dear. So if I, do if I acknowledge it, then that is going to hurt Piastri's morale. But it's going to make him more aggressive. If I intervene, that is going to... Well, that's just a 50-50 coin toss. Feel like intervene. We can't have his morale being low. He's only just come to the team. Let's intervene. Yeah, intervene. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. See what that does. And now our, ooh, our race engineer has gone up by one. Is this the one that had a problem with Piastri or no? I don't know. Um, okay, interesting. We're actually, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not used to the, this, uh, this amount of growth in our employees. Because usually they were just, like, the ones we had at McLaren, they were just too good to gain any more experience or whatever. And now we've got a new regulation vote. Complete suspension overhaul or a major suspension overhaul. Um, major or complete. So minus 50, minus 55 on everything there. Ah, um, let's go for, let's go for the complete suspension overall. Minus 50. Yeah, let's go for that. Let's go for that. Uh, let's see what else coming up. Refurbished factory. Okay, that's good. So all our facilities now, they're, they're not falling apart. Apart from the race simulator. Okay, race simulator, fix that. Operations facility, all good. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. And our race and oh, another race engineer has improved in performance. 84, okay, not bad, not bad. No, it's, it's, it's a wonder what things can do when you refurbish things. Um, right, the vote's in, and it's a favour for major technical regulations. Um, so I voted... How uh, for this change, yeah. So it's going to be a big old win as we get the race prep for the Australian Grand Prix. So these targets... The reward can be times by three if we hit them. So I'm going to aim. I'm going to aim low on purpose. Okay. One driver above there. Reach Q3. No, reach Q2. Two drivers in Q2. Just, I want to play it safe to get the times three bonus. Race bonus. Let's go for at least one driver in the top ten. Yeah, yeah. One driver in the top ten. Let's go for that. Let's go for that. So Merck have made some good upgrades. So they're better than us in two areas. We're, oh, we're going to be kind of in the middle of Merck and Alpine, I feel. McLaren have actually, yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're McLaren. Uh, they're, I won the championship with them last season. I know how much resources they've got because we took them to the championship in two seasons. So no surprise, they've managed to upgrade very rapidly. At least we are still ahead of plenty of other teams. Like, you know, all these teams we don't have to worry about leapfrogging. It's really just we're looking above at Aston, Ferrari, Red Bull, McLaren. We're going to be looking sideways at Mercedes and Alpine, it looks like. Following all the practice sessions, well, this is a very strange sight. Leclerc in Red Bull overalls, P1. There's our reigning champion, Lando Norris. Now in our rival team, McLaren, P2. The Stappen, this looks just so odd. Russell, the Ferrari signs there. We're sit ninth and 11th. I don't think it's representative, though, fully where we are, because you've got Vettel down there as well. Um, but I think we are on the edge of the top 10. So there is, there's very much a lot of work to do, but I, I'm hoping we can be in a good sort of region just to fight for some good points. But, um, yeah, very interesting looking grid. Very, very different grid three seasons in now. Satisfaction wise, 82% for driver prep for Piastri, 79 uh, for, um, for, for Sonoda. Uh, setup wise, actually pretty good, 89%. For Piastri, 92 for Sonoda. So that's pretty good. It's actually more about the car part knowledge that they're just not you know, used to because we've got such a new car here um, coming in from even when we started pre-season, basically. And now comes our first qualifying of this season. And with this new team, I am raring to go. I'm excited. I'm excited. We're going to try and use all the learnings we got from the uh, McLaren 
days of uh, trying to run this team and hopefully we can manage them to a pretty good position. The St. Piastri out early. Look at that. That's our new baby. That's our new car. The Golf Williams livery. It's looking lovely. It's looking a bit gorgeous. And the home favourite is out first. Right, second laps a lot quicker for Piastri. Second lap, maybe a little bit quicker for Sonoda, but yellow middle sector. But Sonoda's actually looking the faster man of the two. If he ends up being the faster of the two immediately, I will not be too surprised because Sonoda's been in this team for at least a season. Piastri, it's completely a new machine to him compared to Sonoda. The only thing new for him is the car parts and me as a boss, basically. But right now, Piastri, two and a half tenths off Sonoda. Bit surprised there, so there's definitely some time to find for him. But uh, I'm going to cut him some slack being completely new to the team, of course. But early lap in. Let's see what the damage is when other people do their lap times. I'm hoping we won't need to go again in Q1 at least. I'm hoping this team is in a place where we can at least just, you know, you know, you know be okay just to do one run in Q1. And at the moment, I think we're going to be comfortably good enough. Yeah, it's looking all good, you know, because I don't think anyone else here... I mean, what's happened to Aston there? I thought Aston were going to be really good, but Albon and Joe, I mean, their driver pairing isn't exactly amazing. Albon used to drive for Williams, and I was actually excited to have Albon and Sonoda as drivers, but he's been signed by Aston, and Albon and Joe not really performing to where the car should theoretically be, you would say, uh, looking at the car analysis screen. Um... Leclerc, loving life right now. Red Bull, P1 there. Norris. This is... I'm not going to get used to it. Leclerc and Red Bull. Russell Ferrari. Perez Mercedes. It's really cool still to see Vettel at, at McLaren, of course. Uh, Ocon at Mercedes. Also, there's another rogue one. That's a bit weird. And Oliver, Oliver Beerman doing very well in Haas. P10. That's pretty damn good. Right, we're through into Q2. No problems, actually. One run. That was good enough. Very Noah's Ark, though. Two Red Bulls, two McLarens, two Ferraris. Then you've got Sonoda. And Joe Guanyu did pull, out, pull it out of the bag. P8. That's a bit more like it. That's where, you know, I thought there was some performance in the Aston. But Albon's had a bit of a blunder there in his new digs. P19. Ocon as well in the Merc. That's not great for him. Um, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised by that. Okay. I think we could actually get both drivers into Q3 if if they can pull the laps out. Right, Piastri's got a clean track ahead of him. Literally no one's going to interrupt him on that first flyer. So is Sonoda as well. So hopefully this is going to be an okay lap. We won't really know until others set a time. But also Piastri will have an uninterrupted second flyer as well. But no improvements on the second flyer for him. Whereas Sonoda has made improvements. To be fair, Piastri's now ahead by three and a half tenths. So Sonoda definitely actually has some time to find. And finding that form he had in Q1. P1. As we go through to the start and finish line. Let's see what Yuki can do across the line. Is it a good improvement? Okay, it's a decent improvement. Still, actually, Piastri's gone quicker. So, interesting. Okay, Piastri feeling a bit more comfy with the car, which is good, which is good. Right, as it stands then, going to the last five minutes, we're both into the top ten shootout. But, you know, science is there who can definitely improve. Vettel, I would feel like it should be improving. Joe as well. So that's three positions. And already then you feel a little bit a little bit tense about making it through. So we need this one final run. Just fueling up for one lap. Going to leave it right to the death and then send them out. And hopefully they can book in a time. Because there you go. Vettel pops in a time for P3 now. He's on pace. He's on pace. As so is Sainz. So yeah, going to need this last lap. Right, Piastri is... Where is Piastri? Oh, he's not even going to finish... Oh, come on. How have I done this on the first time? Oh, no. No. I think we're good still, but I've messed it up. They didn't have time to go round. Oh, my God. Williams must be thinking, who have we hired? How did this Muppet win McLaren a championship? But we somehow made it through, actually, still. We've made it through. We've made it through. So, no, our car is actually, our car is actually okay. It's okay. I, I'm happy with this. I can work with a team that's capable of getting to Q3 off the bat. I can work with that. I can work with that. So in practice, we are quicker. We, in reality, like we're quicker than Merck. We're quicker than Alpine, which is good. Obviously, we knew these three teams were going to be quicker than us. That's fine. I can live with that. And the fact we've actually, we're quicker than Aston, who I was very worried about, um... We're actually the fourth best team at the moment, as it as it looks. Right, sending both drivers out early to do two runs. 
on this set of tyres. Oh, uh, a lot of traffic there. Wow. Okay, everyone left it so late to go out that we just got held up there on every single lap we've done there. That's annoying, but it is what it is, to be fair. First time I'm asking, sonoda has gone quicker than Vettel and Norris. His first lap's actually been very, very good for Sonoda. Piastri needs to find a lot of time, but I think he got held up quite a lot there. Right, Piastri goes for another lap, and this time he's uninterrupted there. He's got plenty of clean air. So as he rounds the bend, ah, oh, it's only a green first sector, yellow middle. We need much bigger improvement for him on the second lap. Um, yeah, he hardly improves there. Only P8. Sonoda's flying, though. What the hell is in the water here? Sonoda. Go on, son. Keep going. He's going to catch to a, he's going to catch a Ferrari. But Yuki Sonoda, let's go for the helmet cam. As we go through the last corner. He's P3 at the moment. He's gone green, green across the line. What's it going to be? Oh, what the? What the hell has happened there? Yuki Sonoda's provisional pole at the moment. What? What's that? Surely not. Surely others have got so much time to find. What is going on? What is going on? Piastri, what's your improvement saying? Come on, mate. Come on. You've got to be getting closer to Sonoda here. Cross the line. 6.6 tenths off. Sonoda, I know he's in a new car, but he's he's higher rated than Sonoda. I was expecting more here, but just goes to show maybe that affinity with his race engineer, the fact he's been in a team for a year. But is this it? Who? Surely others... Okay, there's still others finishing their laps. We're not going to be on pole. There's no way we're on pole position for this race. Let's fast forward here. Right, checkered flag for Vettel. So Vettel's not going quicker. Science pops in a time. Only third place. Where is Verstappen? Where are... These guys just got held up in a bit of traffic. Verstappen and the Merc of Perez just got held up by an Alpine there. I think in traffic. Verstappen to the line. Surely he's going to get pole position here. Across the... He doesn't. He doesn't. It's down to Leclerc. And he's going slow. I think he's on an in-lap. And... What? Ha! Ha! Lando's just got across the line. P3. What's going on? What's going on? What have we just done? What have we just done? Leclerc's in. Leclerc's in. Piastri's only man still going. And he's... I can't believe this. What is... What has Yuki Tsunoda done? Oh, my God. Go on, you little Japanese trooper. What a man. What a man. Pole position. First race for Williams. And we've got a pole position. What the hell happened there? He found like a... He found like an eight tenths of a second in Q3. That is mad. That is outrageous from Yuki Tsunoda. Piastri must be thinking, what the hell just happened? These lot must be thinking, what the hell just happened? I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. How has he done that? How has he... Our car... You saw the car analysis screen. We did not have a car that was first in many categories. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right, Sunday's race. There's some moderate rain, apparently. Moderate rain. What does that mean? What does that mean? Okay, it's going to be dries and then inters for most of this race. So I think we... I think we go... It's going to start raining actually from here though. So I think we go on softs and just try and edge it out till inters. And it, it's looking like inters should surely be around like then, like lap 15. And then probably just another inters at the end. I'm still in disbelief. I'm still in disbelief. How Sonoda has pulled out P1 is unreal. 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 I mean, he knows I'm a big fan, especially in this series. You know, I was celebrating him like he was one of my own when he won at Spa when we were still working for McLaren. But now he's ours. Now we're working for, for Williams with him. And he just bagged us a pole. I can't. Wow. Wow. I don't think I, I'm, I'm. I don't know what to expect now. I, I'm not expecting a podium. I, 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 I don't want to sound pessimistic. I'm not expecting a podium. But even the fact he's got a pole just gives me so much confidence that we can build on on that 
and create a, at least a good car or over one lap and then we'll see what the race pace is like, I guess, of this Williams car. The fans here in Melbourne are all set, as are the drivers, heading into 58 laps around Albert Park. Yuki Tsunoda will be hoping things go his way today. They start in P1, but will they be able to stay there? The first corner could be so crucial. So let's see what today has in store, shall we? Brace yourself for the Australian Grand Prix. Here we go, lights out and away we go, Sonoda off pole position, can he maintain first place into turn one? I think he's good, you know, I think he's good, Lando Norris comes through, trying to get up into P2, our former driver side by side with Max Verstappen, but Sonoda stays in first place, Piastri's lost a position down to P10, he's behind the Haas car, he's behind the Haas, Oliver Beerman's made a great overtake there. And the Alfa Romeo Haas is ahead of us. What on earth is going on? What is going on here? Right, we just push. It's already overcast. We just push these tyres, I think, and just try and keep this track position. And then when the rain falls, well, I don't know how this car performs in the wet. I have a really bad feeling it's going to perform quite badly in the wet. So we will just live the dream for as long as we can in P1 at the moment. This is insane, though. I don't even know how, what, I'm lost for words. Verstappen's coming down the inside. Oh, the dream might be over already. There is the Red Bull up into P1. Sonoda loses first place almost immediately um, in the opening stages here. I mean, at least he did well off the line. At least he did well off the line. But, I mean, that's to be expected. But bloody hell, how, how did he even... How did he even do that? How was he even first? Piastri's gone, but Piastri's lost another position. What is going on? Piastri. No, what's going on, man? Where's your pace? Where's your pace? Well, I'm going to go ERS battle assist with uh, both drivers. Piastri currently battling uh, to stay ahead of an Alpine of Kevin Magnussen. And K-Mag's not giving up. Magnussen's there. Piastri is going to get overtaken. He's down to P11. Sonoda's still P2 somehow, but Piastri's gone backwards by two positions. It's very, very odd. It's almost like Piastri is where I thought our car would be. And Sonoda's just in, in fairyland at the moment. I don't, I don't really, I can't say anything more than that. Fuel-wise, let's stop burning fuel. Tire-wise, I think we're good to push. Because I think we're, we're, yeah, we can ring out these tyres. Let's just go down to aggressive. But I feel like there's no point saving these tyres because we're going to go to wet anyway. Sonoda's going to get overtaken here. And, uh, oh, I've just seen Lando Norris has P1 in his car since winning that championship. Very nice little touch there. Lando round the outside. Can we defend? No. Sonoda down to P3. But to be expected. Like I said, I didn't expect a podium. I'm still not expecting a podium in this race. Right, Piastri. What can we do with him? What can we do with him? He's losing time to Magnussen. And that Haas as well, a Beerman. What's going on? He's now holding up Perez. They've got the same car. In fact, actually, it didn't Pia I gave Piastri the better floor. I think Sonoda's going to get overtaken here uh, by, the, uh, by Leclerc and the Red Bull and Sainz and the Ferrari. The rain has started to fall already. So we can probably push this up to attack again. If the rain's already falling, may as well just carry on pushing on. Oh, yellow flags. What for? What for? Piastri's overtaken Perez. Let's watch that. So he's uh, he's been overtaken by Perez, actually. He's re-overtaken Checo, that is, for P11 on the inside. At least we know there's a bit of performance there in a straight line to get the Merc. But I'm very baffled right now at the lack of pace from Piastri being a higher-rated driver. And he gets re-overtaken by Perez there. As Sonoda is somehow holding up Leclerc, Sainz, Russell, Vettel. He's doing a great job of holding them up. So no, this is the Yuki Sonoda train this is. And there goes Leclerc in the Red Bull. We're still ahead of the Ferraris. And ahead 3.5. That's how much we've held up these guys basically in our car. As Piastri just continues to be annoyed by Perez. And can't really close in at all. On that Haas, all those two two Alpine cars. Right, Sonoda's down to P6 now. 
on lap eight. He's been overtaken by both Ferraris and probably soon it will be uh, our final older driver, Sebastian Vettel and that McLaren in uh, P7. From then on, we have to hold position because the Alpine's just there. So I'm hoping we can hold from P7 onwards, but I, I don't know. This, the, more and more, Sonoda's pole lap is just looking like more extra, extraordinary performance because Piastri's now down to P13. What is going on with Piastri? He's a great driver. What's going on? All right, Sonoda's now got Magnus in for company. Going to give him a bit of fuel to work with. Try and push on. As our tie, I mean, our tyres are as bad as anyone else's, really. Um, Magnussen, oh, Magnussen pulls out. Can we please defend that? Please defend that. Don't get overtaken by the Alpine. No, no, no. He's through. He's through. Qualifying gave us a false sense of hope, of dreaming, because this is where our car actually is. And an Alpine just done us. And we've been sat behind an Alfa Romeo and Mercedes the entire race with Piastri. All right, Verstappen's in. Verstappen is in. He's on for Inters. I don't think it's damp enough, though. Yeah, a lot of us have continued on. I'm going to have to double stack. I should have pit Piastri for that before. In hindsight, I should have pit Piastri just then. Because now I'm going to have to double stack. And they're not too far away from each other. Piastri's there. Sonoda's there. So Piastri actually has quietly caught up a little bit to Sonoda. They're both in now. This has to be a double stack of dreams, boys. Good. Where's Piastri? Okay, Piastri immediately follows behind. It's an okay pit stop. We get held a little bit. So Sonoda's P7 still on Inters now. And Piastri's still P12. So we've not lost any positions. The only thing that's happened is Norris has actually overtaken Verstappen. Verstappen went one lap too early. Uh, the lap I said I maybe should have pit Piastri. Verstappen's actually lost out um, because of that. So in the end, actually, maybe it was a better thing that we just double stacked them there. Going to get the temps up and then go very, very cautious. On, uh, on on the pushing here because I think the, the motive might be going long on this set of tyres. I think the motive is going long on these tyres. So we've got Sonoda ahead of sight. Magnussen's still ahead of us though. So if we're not... Well, Sainz will overtake us. He's, we're going to be down to P8. Magnussen's just stayed ahead. That Alpine's actually got some great race pace and Piastri's just still not looking too hot. And now Sonoda's under pressure from Pierre Gasly as Norris locks up. He loses first place. But this is our race with the Alpine and we're defending against Gasly. Yeah, our race pace just really isn't the same as our qualifying pace. We've got a qualifying car. We don't have a race car. This is horrendous pace compared to uh, what I was hoping for off the back of Quali. I think the motive's trying to do one less stop here. Trying to go to the end if we can. That's very classic Williams from real life, trying to go to the end. We're saving a lot of fuel, though. We've got a lot of fuel here to burn, so let's burn it. I don't know why we're saving so much fuel, though. So, sit rep, lap 25. Sonoda's been overtaken not only by Perez, but by Gasly, and he's P10 now. So, officially, we are scraping for even a single championship point. But I'm so baffled. Is my game broken right now? Because I'm on pushing fuel... And they're, they're hardly burning any of this fuel. It's, it's, in, it's incredible. What's going on? And then I'm still so confused about Piastri. He's 88 rated. How is he not performing right now? And Albon's just overtaken Sonoda. He's overtaken him. Oh, this is a trial by fire. This is, this is a very rude awakening after qualifying there. From pole position to P11 and 14. Oh, dear. What's this fuel, though? What is going on with this fuel? Is my game broken? Oh, Piastri's made an overtake. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Piastri's made an overtake. This is news. This is breaking news. He's made an overtake on the Mercedes car. Hallelujah. And he overtakes Beerman. Come on. Come on. On the inside of the Alfa Romeo house. Now Piastri is getting a little bit comfortable in the car. Two overtakes done. Up to P12. And he's in clean air now. Oh, competitors crash. There's a crash on circuit as Piastri's defending against Ocon in the Mercedes. And Russell has crashed in the Ferrari. Oh, no. Is it with his team? Oh, no. It's not with his teammates. It's with a McLaren. But it's not even with anyone. It's just straight into the wall for Russell, I think, or into the gravel at least. So Russell 
is... Uh, oh, he's back up and running. Oh, well, that's no use to us, is it? That's no use to us. Meanwhile, Zenoda, P11 now out the points. Piastri here fighting Ocon. Only four seconds down the road from Sonoda. So, in the end of it, Piastri might be actually quite close to Sonoda. But it looks like everyone is going for this one stop because no one's coming in. No one's coming in yet. I really thought the AI were going to do a two stop here. I think if this was before the patch where they became a bit clever, that would have been... It, it would have been uh, a two stop for them. But now, they're just as clever as people. And it's it's the it's the stubborn one stop for all of us. Going to go a little bit aggressive now on the pushing because we've got less than 15 laps to go. 60% 60, 60 tyre with 15 laps. I think it's good enough to start pushing a bit harder. Sonoda, he's how many seconds? 1.4 off Albon, so 1.4 off points. Let's see if we can maybe get some points. Bit of deploy maybe used as well. Same for Piastri to try and get away from uh, from that Mercedes. He has, he has dropped Ocon by second there, which is good. And Sonoda is going for a pass. I think he's just overtaken Albon there. Yep. Sonoda has made an overtake to get into P10 to get one point in this race, potentially. He's now closing back on Gasly, so we're looking a bit slow. But now, we're looking a bit quicker than maybe the car ahead of us, at least. And it's, oh, it's sunny now. What the hell has happened here? It's very sunny. The sun has come out. It's still very wet out there. This is a very odd sight. Very, very odd sight. It looks like it's dry, but there's still a lot of standing water out on circuit. Sonoda still in the pursuit and chase of Pierre Gasly. Piastri is well ahead of Ocon now. 3.3 to catch Albon in six laps. And also, what's this fuel? If this fuel is actually legit... I'm going to have to really start looking at, like, under-fueling them because I don't know what's gone on here, but this is mad. They've saved so much fuel. Right, Yuki, let's try and go for a pass if we can. We're on battle assist. Let's, uh, let's top up in some DRS and then look if we can go deploy later on as we gain. Top up here into turn one. Uh, still not really. We need to fill that battery a bit higher. All right, we're gaining here. Let's go a bit of deploy. Let's go deploy. Can we get Gasly? Into lap 56, this will be 55. Oh, 55, sorry for the leaders. Not really making much of a gain there on uh, on Pierre Gasly, unfortunately. Right, Gasly's overtaking Perez. That's a battle ahead that's happening instead. And unfortunately, we are now, well, defending it's Albon, I guess, a little bit. I've pushed Piastri to try and shred his tyres a bit. And now I think we can probably do the same to Sonoda. Final lap of the Grand Prix. Verstappen leads from Leclerc. It's a 1-2 for Red Bull. Very Noah's Ark. 2-2. Two, two. two McLarens. Norris Vettel. Russell and Sainz close together. Magnussen gets... It's literally Noah's Ark. What the hell's going on here? Gasly leading this train. Sonoda maybe can make a move on the Mercedes. This would be quite cool. On the inside. Can you go for it? Come on. Let's get the Merc. Let's be... Let's, let's be beating the works Mercedes team, please. Come on. Sonoda up to P9 a little bit. Of joy at the end of this race. He's overtaken him. Great move. Great, great move. Let's go deploy right at the end here. Let's try and get Gasly. He's got no DRS off a car ahead. Surely we can try and pass him for P8. Come on, mate. Come on, come on. Bit more deploy here. He's gaining, he's gaining. Not going to be enough, though. Not going to be enough to pass. And meanwhile, Piastri does close up to this train a little bit. They're right there, but... He's had a very quiet race, Piastri has. I'm going to chalk it down to him being not comfortable with the car. But this has been a very confusing F1 Manager 23 race. I didn't know what I was expecting, changing teams and having a first race. This certainly wasn't it, getting pole position and then being here in P9. But Verstappen has just won the first Grand Prix. It's a 1-2 for Red Bull. GG's to them. McLaren, my old team, are going to have work cut out because they look pretty damn rapid. But Sonoda here, trying to maybe get a last minute eighth place. Can I go deploy? Maybe do anything for him? No, no big dive on the inside there. It is technically dry now as well, I've just seen on the top right there. But Sonoda will just have to pull this through for uh, P9. Piastri out the points. Sonoda will finish up in P9. Two points on the board for Williams. Um, 
Right, yeah, we have work to do, clearly. Clearly a lot of work to do in terms of race pace terms. I'm just still so shocked then. If the car was where it is here, how on earth did Yuki get pole? How did he manage that? I was, uh, that makes that pole position even more incredible. Oh, Verstappen, top in the podium. Leclerc and Red Bull overalls. That looks just very, very weird. And then our, uh, well, Lando Norris, our old old driver, the reigning champ, P3. But Red Bull looked very, very quick again, like they were in season one. But So off the bat, I mean, off the bat, we're P5 in the constructors with two points there. So it's not horrendous, but... Alpine was a rogue one. I didn't think Alpine were going to be quicker than this in the race, but they were. So we've got work to do to try and come back at the French outfit. And then there's a massive gulf, gulf to where Ferrari, McLaren, Red Bull are. But that is going to conclude this first episode then with our Williams return to glory. Guys, if you have enjoyed it, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Let me know if you guys have been playing, you know, since the latest patches on F1 Manager. If you've got any idea what on earth I was facing there with that fuel... Um, or anything like that, let me know. I don't know if that's a glitch or not or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed a surprise first episode here earlier than I said it would. And hopefully you're going to enjoy me building up another team to glory eventually. But till the next one, guys, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.